Welcome back to the Fairfield Dynasty. Today we're on the road as we'll be taking on the team tied for first place in the MAC East Kent State. Fairfield is coming off their first victory of the season, beating Buffalo last week by 14 points. It was a pretty dominating performance for the Blue Devils, and they'll look to get their second win on the season and tie last year's win total here today against a very talented team. Our offense will start off with the ball. Here's Terrence Lake. He'll keep it on the read option. He has some room to run and picks up a first down. We ran for 268 yards last week in our victory, and it was a very good performance. Now a throw to the outside. There's Sherman back on the catch. He has 14 yards. One thing to note, uh, fourth string wide receiver Darren Childress is out for today's game, and he will miss the next two games as well. There's a stop for the Golden Flashes. Now here is Rankin, the running back for Kent State, who picks up 10 yards. Woody Barrett, a former Auburn player, is their starting quarterback. He's a good runner, but only completing 42% of his passes, and he is sacked there by Tavares Golden. We gave up under 100 yards rushing last week. That's a big reason we were successful, and we'll have to do that again if we want to win today. There's a great throw and catch for Kent State. It's now second down and four. A wheel route to the outside for Rankin, and McBride pushes him out of bounds. This is an up-tempo attack for Kent State. It'll be Barrett who steps up in the pocket, and it's incomplete, nearly intercepted. They will kick the field goal, and it is away, and it is good. So it'll be a 3 to nothing lead for Kent State. We'll go empty on second down and eight. Lake will throw and can't get the pass away. He was looking downfield. He'll lose eight yards. Third down and 15. Lake will throw once again. He's taking a shot downfield for TJ Cross and good defense by Cheryl Jr. Can stay back on offense. They'll go play action, a dump down. Brumfield breaks one tackle. He's still going and is down to the 45 yard line, a six yard reception. A big part of Kent State's offense is wide receiver Trey Harrell. He nearly has as many catches as every other person on their team, and he is a very talented player. Barrett will step in the pocket and try to escape. The pressure will get there. Good pursuit by the defense. He'll lose one on the sack. Third down and five. Barrett will throw. He goes outside and misses Harrell along the sideline, and that will bring up fourth down and five. Here's another field goal attempt, this one from around 50 yards, and it's good once again as it's now 6-0 as we have a quick studio update. Number 8 Oklahoma taking on number 5 West Virginia, and it's close early on. Now back to the offensive side for Fairfield. They'll pitch it to Marcus Macklin. He's got some room to run past the 40, past the 45, and it's a 27-yard gain. The option with Terrence Lake has been very effective. He'll just keep it and go straight up the middle. He picks up 12 yards. Split backfield, Allen into the game. Will throw, it's intercepted, looking for Sherman Beck. And Daniel has the interception. And it is the first turnover on the day. And it gives Kent State a chance to extend their lead even more. A dump down to Trey Harrell for his first catch that goes for nine yards. We'll bring a little bit of a blitz. Quick throw though to Brumfield. He's got 13. So first down and 10 trips to the left. Here is Rankin. He's got room to run. He cuts back to the left and is brought down by Trevon Bullock, but it's a big gain. We near the end of the first quarter. It's probably the last play of it, and there is a nine-yard run down to the one-yard line. Right into the second. It's first down and goal. Barrett will keep it, and he will run into the end zone for the first touchdown on the day for either team, as it's now 13-0 Kent State. It will be a give to Sean Allen. He has a nice hole, and that may be one of the better runs he's had this year. A split backfield is Fredericks back into the game, and Lake will just keep it this time. He's got some running room. He only had 20 yards rushing last week, and has already way surpassed that total today. Now here's Dominic Frederick, who has back-to-back 100-yard -back games so far in MAC play, and two touchdowns against Miami of Ohio with 93 yards rushing. He's been much better since we got to conference play. Third down and one. Macklin up the middle, and he's got it for four yards. Frederick will check back into the game, and we'll give it to him. He bounces off of one tackler. A good cut as he's able to pick up six yards. It would look to be a negative play, but he will exit with an apparent injury. Now Lake will keep it, and good option defense there as we lose two or three yards. Lake will throw on third down and seven, and it's nearly intercepted. A one for five start for Terrence Lake, and C.J. Sanders kicks the field goal and will stay perfect on the season. 
There's a good play by the defense. That'll be third down and long. We have struggled at times in stopping these, but there's a great job of defending the screen. Trevon Bullock with the big hit. Now Monte Purcell checks in, and he will pitch it to Frederick. He gets a block on the edge, and he's got some room to run down the sideline inside of Kent State territory. Cross comes in motion. Purcell will keep it and lose two yards that time. So it'll be third down and 12. Lake back into the game as give it to Frederick on the screen. And he's able to get the first down, a 14-yard reception. Three wide. First down, a dump down real quick to Rashad Conway. He'll be getting those fourth receiver snaps since Darren Childress is injured. Lake will throw. He's got cross and a good block by Beck. And Cross is able to get into the end zone from 25 yards out for our first touchdown. And that will allow us to head into halftime with only a three-point deficit. A great drive to end the half once more. We've cut the lead to three. We've got to do a better job on offense of sustaining consistent drives and taking care of the football. We're doing a decent enough job on defense. Only under 200 yards total offense in the first half for Kent State. Maybe a nice first turnover would be good though. Here's Rankin. He's got it for 12 yards on the counter. Shotgun set with one tight end. They will throw to Brumfield. He breaks one tackle and finds his way forward. And that will be a first down for the Golden Flashes. Bunch to the left for Barrett. He throws that way. He's got Ernst who's pushed outside inside of the 40 yard line. And that's a good stop on third down. So another field goal attempt. This one's even longer. And it will be no good. And we have a chance to tie or take the lead on this drive. Good stand by our defense. And here is Frederick. He fights for it on the power for eight yards. We'll give it back to him. Similar type of play with the pulling guard as he picks up five. We'll go under center now as Lake will go play action. Good job picking the block up. And Lawson drops it. He was open. And that will bring up second down and ten. Running the option. Good cut and vision by Lake who finds the hole. There was a defender waiting for him. But he does pick up 18 yards. We'll go full house here, Sean Allen. He's had one good run, and there's another good one for six yards. Now Frederick back into the game from under center. He is hit, but will spin his way forward as we near 200 yards rushing on the ground. So now Macklin, who picks up five yards. These runs of five yards every time, you're going to sustain very good drives if you can do that. Now Lake here, he'll get even more this time as he picks up seven yards. Got to bring up goal to go. It's second down. And we will pitch it outside. Here's Macklin. And he's into the end zone. He stretches it all the way out. And Fairfield has the lead with 3.30 left in the third quarter. It's second down and one. Here's a quick screen to Trey Harrell. He's good in the open field. And he's past the 40 with a 7-yard screen catch. We'll bring four, including Carnell Blackshear. Woody Barrett will take off. And a good tackle by Tavares Golden. Brings up third down and short. Here's Rankin who picks up the first as Dre Dixon brings him down. Three down linemen. Here is the give once again to Rankin. And it's another good run as this one picks up nearly 15 yards and the first. A shotgun three wide look with two to the right. A screen to Harrell and once again he gets a good gain this time nine yards. We're about two minutes left in the third quarter. This is a good drive for Kent State. And there's a great play by DeMar Cartwright and another defender. Cartwright finishes off Woody Barrett. Now Barrett will throw and Brumfield will get the first down as he picks up five yards. It's empty with a quad look to the left. Barrett will throw that way and he's got Brumfield who's brought down but does get the first down. A questionable call there. Good spot for Kent State. It'll be second down and goal. And the pitch to Brumfield. The tight end will get the rushing touchdown from five yards out. He's maybe been their best weapon so far in today's game. Jelani Maddox, the four-string running back, checks in as he'll pick up around five yards. Fifteen seconds left in the third quarter as we're close to heading into that fourth quarter, holding on to the football. So we will head in the fourth quarter down by three. Fairfield has the ball driving with a chance to retake their lead. It'll be third down and eight throw. Throw and a good catch and good job of hanging on to the football for Sherman Beck. For all the good he's done, he has had trouble hanging on to the football at times. But there was a strong hand catch there for him 
as now Lake picks up 14 yards on the read option. A split back will give it to Frederick. He finds a nice hole and will get to the 25 yard line, a 12 yard run. Taking some nice time off the clock here. That's really what our offense has become, we're really relying on running the ball and just wearing down opponents' defenses and limiting possessions for their offenses. It's third down and inches. We bring in two extra blockers and Frederick will get the first down. But it's now third down and long. Here's a screen pass to Frederick. He tries to get outside once more and he can't do it as he picks up three yards and we'll have to bring on CJ Sanders. He will kick it and it is good. So we're tied back up at 20 as we have another studio update. Eastern Michigan is now three and four after beating Toledo. First down and 10, Barrett drops back, throws across the middle for Harrell, and he will be just shy of that first down marker. Trips to the right, and they will go to the ground game. Here's Rankin, who picks up three, and that will just move the sticks. They'll go empty with trips to the right. Good protection there, they'll throw it to Dixon, and he's got it inside of Fairfield territory. He picks up 14. Third down and long, Barrett looks, and he'll set up the screen pass. Dixon gets blocked, and now Rankin's into the open field. A shoestring tackle as it goes for 22. Three minutes left. Here's Rankin straight up the gut. Dixon can't bring him down, but Rankin is finally brought down inside of the five. It'll be goal to go. Here's Rankin, and Gary Caldwell, the sophomore linebacker, makes the play. Second down and goal. Here's Washington. He powers over Amari Burks, the backup free safety, and Kent State will retake the lead. 27 to 20 with 220 left in the ball game. A nice throw there and a quick start to the drive. 16 yard reception for Tavarius Edwards. His senior season hasn't been as big as some were expecting, but he is still reliable at times. Now there is a nice big chunk play, 19 yards for Antonio Lawson. Some of the backup receivers into the game here. Sherman Beck in the flats. He picks up seven yards and will just step out of bounds to stop the clock. Second down and three, now Tavares Edwards once again, he spins and is brought down to the 20 yard line. We have a bunch set tight in the line as Lake will throw and Beck has it, no he drops it. It's forced out of his hands and will bring up third down and 10. That looked to be either a touchdown to set us for the one yard line. On third down, here's Amari Pearson. He's got it for 10 yards and bring up fourth down and inches. The give goes to Aaron Montana and the fullback will convert. So we will use our first timeout. We've got three more shots of the end zone. Second down and goal. That's nearly intercepted by Miles Davis. So two more shots. Third down and goal. Lake will drop back. He throws. And Conway can't make the catch. So now one more chance to get into the end zone. We'll stick with the bunch look. On fourth down, Lake will throw. He lobs it outside. It's intercepted by Parker. And he'll go down to the end zone for the touchback. It's a great goal line stand for Kent State, and we can't punch it into the end zone. It was a great drive that we just could not finish off. We had chances, and it was great coverage in the end zone and on that goal line stand by the Kent State defense. A disappointing end to this game. I thought we had a chance to tie it and definitely get another win and get our second one on the season. But Kent State's one of the better teams in the MAC, and being on the road, it's always tough to win in college football. However, Dominique Frederick does continue his 100-yard game streak. Didn't really do a whole bunch in the passing game, but had a number of receivers catch the ball. Three tackles for losses for Tavares Golden. I thought our defense played well enough to win today. They didn't give up too much yardage. It was two turnovers. The last turnover is not too big, as that was just taking a shot into the end zone and having it picked off. The other interception definitely was a bad pass. But we can't focus on that game. We have to move forward. And we have another very winnable game. This and the Buffalo game are two games that I'm really targeting as winnable. Along with the Akron game that follows this one. Bowling Green is a 1-6 and lack talent. They're somewhat similar to us. However, they did just beat Army. Army started 6-0 and an hour 6-2. And, and are dropping in the MAC East standings. That they were going to maybe run away with that title. But you can see some of the talent. They have a good quarterback. He does turn over the ball a little bit more than you would like to see, but does add a little bit in the ground game. A quick recruiting update. As a junior college center, we weren't really targeting commits to Pitt. And then we do get a commitment from Will Silva, who I could see either playing safety or corner for us, depending on where our needs lie. 
Our recruiting class is number 31 in the country. We actually have the most prospects in the country signed at this point, which is great to see. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like down below. Subscribe for more of the Fairfield Dynasty. I will see you for the next game against Bowling Green. Cousin out.